Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Sometimes a racer is defined by more than outright performance, by more than the wins or by the money taken home. Sometimes a racer can become known just by his or her tenacity, the length to which they will go to make it there, to make the race happen. It would seem that Brian Chucky Davis of Detroit is one of that sort. Just as an example, well, I've never once paid punk out in my life, Brian says proudly. To translate from grudge terms, he's referring to the deposit or down payment each racer makes before a grudge race that he or she will forfeit upon a no-show. So when people come to track or if they take time to go to the street, I feel that they're comfortable knowing if they work extra hard to have money to come see me. They know that they're gonna get their money's worth. That kind of commitment and respect for the sport itself of course isn't contrived or newfound. It can only be something deep-seated within the person and it always starts out very early as any racing person can attest. As Brian says in his childhood, I just loved being around cars or anything fast. I had dirt bikes, motorcycles, go-karts, anything that had an engine on it when it was small, I always wanted to have one. Anything that had an engine on it when I was small, I always wanted to have one. And in Brian's case, the exposure to racing specifically came about a bit gradually, but for him, it certainly stuck with him. My family was into racing, but it wasn't die hard, he explains. Continuing, My dad had a 69 Nova and we would go putz around, race a couple of people here and there at stoplights or whatever. His car wasn't something where we went and found anyone on the street. Nevertheless, that core passion continued unabated through some of the most difficult circumstances for any child. My parents passed away when I was seven, Brian explains, and I moved in with my aunt and uncle, and they were into cars too. My uncle Mark had a bunch of cars and he was a little more into it. So we used to go to Detroit Dragway and that spiked my interest. And as it so often seems for racers across formats, street action was a key entry point to Brian's lifelong involvement in the sport. As he recounts, his time at the Dragway led me to realize there was street racing and then when I was young, sneaking out of the house, going to watch it and then finally partaking in it. That last part is said with very heavy air quotes by the way. And he paid certain prices for that too, such as getting pulled over in his high school parking lot for going 125 in a 35, and went to jail and lost his license just about a month after his 16th birthday. The early fraught days of street racing soon gave way to new visits to the track, not as a spectator anymore but as a racer. A grudge racer specifically. And it's in this format, the grudge scene, that Brian's grit and relentlessness truly began to take shape. For Brian, racing is like a form of meditation. For me, it's an outlet, it's healthy. Because if I want to, every week I can go racing. And for him, the most important parts are not necessarily the wins and losses, but rather the more routine aspects that coalesce into rituals. The best part of racing is the trip, he says. The traveling, the going there, the getting ready, the people standing up with you. When I win, I always ask the camera guy, go to my guys, go to my crew, I want to see their facial expressions. So to term it just an outlet is a bit of a disservice. It's something that for Brian, if I didn't have, who knows what I would be like. So it's absolutely worth every single penny because it gives me something to always look forward to. And that's something indeed worth fighting for. What happened to Brian Davis? Nothing major happened to him in recent years, although he was in a serious accident with the Big Chief in 2015. The two got into the car in the middle of the race in Season 7 of Street Outlaws. At racing speeds, both cars ended up flipping many times before landing in a ditch. The cars were saved and racers managed to jump with some injuries. David had minor injuries but Justin broke ribs and was taken to the hospital. He ended up having bruised lungs, also known as pulmonary contusions. That brings us to the end of today's video. Do let us know in the comments down below if we missed something. Anyways, be sure to leave a like to the video if you enjoyed it and we'll see you guys in the next one.